Today we will be installing an Adams Ray 8211 panic device, top rod only with electric latch retraction. We're going to find the back set using an adjustable square. And according to the instructions from Adams Ray, it says that it's 1.08 inches from the edge of the door, which on a radius or a flat style door, that's easy enough. On a beveled door, it's a little more tricky. But we'll be doing um, a radius. So I've already pre-measured. I'll be going from the side, making sure that the actual ruler of the adjustable square is flat against the door. So we'll mark, mark the door here. As you can see, it's already pre-marked. This has already been installed on this door. So then you just take that measurement all the way down using a uh, spirit level or another kind of straight edge. You can go ahead and mark that all the way down from the top. It would be the same if you were doing a top and bottom rod as well. You just have to take that measurement all the way down the door. And uh, that's how you find back set on a radius or flat aluminum style door. So for measuring a beveled door, you would need to take measure the width of the style and then essentially divide that in half and put your mark there. And that will be where you're going to measure your back set from. So in this case, this happens to be an inch and 12 sixteenths. So what I'll do is I will take my measurement from here. If this was a bevel door instead of a radius like it is. And then I would use this measurement to get my center or my back set on the face of the style. Okay. Now we're going to install the rod guide. We're using the back set that we've already determined and already drawn down the side of the door for the style. We're going to drill those holes and install the rod guide. One thing to consider and keep in mind is you see how much play this has. If this isn't installed centered, it can cause the, the rod to bind and not release properly when the uh, device is actually actuate, actuated. Installing the rod assembly. One thing to do is to snap this in place. It'll kind of keep it uh, immobilized so it won't be swinging back and forth. If you have an issue um, or you haven't gotten to this step yet, um, I suggest using a piece of tape. Painter's tape, electrical tape, duct tape, something that won't leave a lot of adhesive on the door when you're finished. And actually put the tape onto the door holding the rod in place. Now we're going to use the this provided screws. Or you're going to install the, the bottom screw on the rod assembly. Once that's completed, 
you'll notice the top screw is obscured by the rest of the rod. We can pop it out of the rod guide if we're using that. We can lean it over. We can tape it to the door. We can do a number of different things. But we definitely want to control this because we don't want it to fall and break. So now that the top screw hole is visible, we'll go ahead and insert the top mounting screw. We'll put this back in the rod guide just for safety. You'll notice when you're looking actually at the rod assembly, there's a small scribe mark. And this mark right there indicates proper timing. So you want this mark to score, correspond with the timing mark on the upper gear. If you don't do that, the rod won't operate properly and it could actually damage it uh, depending on how forcefully you try to get it to operate. So this is the timing mark that I was discuss discussing a moment ago. You can't really see it without this black mark there. That marks, if you try to install it this way, the device won't operate properly. So these two timing marks on the upper gear wheel and the central gear wheel need to be aligned when you go to install the device itself. So we wanted to point that out and make sure that you, you saw it because you really couldn't tell in the video before. So now that the rod assembly is put in the proper timing, the rod is actually secured to the door, we're going to install the actual bar. bar has two mounting screws that will hold it in place and in just a moment I'll show you how to actually connect the solenoid component to the rod assembly. The handing on this cam portion is specific to right hand reverse or left hand reverse doors. You'll notice on this door it's going up, this other door it's actually going down. But if the timing is not correct, this device won't function. In order to secure the cam to the rod assembly, you need to take a small screw with washer that is supplied and insert it screw it into place. Holding the device down will assist it, assist you in actually tightening that, that screw down properly. Since we're installing the 8211 with electric latch retraction, we obviously have to control the motor assembly with the voltage so that we can trigger it when necessary. When you are prepping the door and making your, your holes for the screws to be inserted into, keep in mind that you're still going to have to drill a hole for the cable to go through. This particular model has two black and two blue wires. The black are non-polarized, so it doesn't matter if positive or negative are applied to them. And the blue are only used for some kind of a secondary device, like an automatic operator or something to that effect. But once you have drilled this hole, all the other prep has been done, and you're routing your wire or your cable, you're going to, on an aluminum storefront door, 
you will use this side style and you will actually route the wire up and in through a door loop or electrical transfer of some other kind. The 8211 uh, or any of the other 8200 devices with uh, top rod, you will need to be able to mount the strike on the header. Um, with the blades stop or a foil stop um, or an applied stop, the measurements will need to be taken accordingly uh, per the instructions. The blade stop will actually have to be cut out a little bit and the applied stop or the, uh, the uh, pre-existing door stop on the header uh, will be used to actually mount the strike itself. To find those measurements, we'll take the 8200 template and using the outside door edge. I've already marked the center line where the, where the door stops here on this on the header here and I've marked the center line from the door across the header. That way when I'm installing this template the correct so using the outside edge of the door you will apply it like so and you'll mark your hole for your strike. The strike's already been installed here, but I'll remove it to show you um, what the template looks like on the, uh, on the header. Now that the template is applied to the header, mark your strike hole with a center punch. Obviously, this one's already been drilled out. We've already had this installed. But the strike itself looks like this and when tightened with an allen head uh, wrench the top component of the strike will actually bite into the header and hold it still. Now when you are installing this I wouldn't suggest tightening it down until you actually have the upper latch component installed. That way you can put this in the correct position and uh, tighten it down. So to install the top strike, we'll adjust this down, put it in the hole like this, hold it in place using a pound wrench with a little bit of downward pressure to help bind the bolt. So you can actually tighten it down. You'll get it to general proximate position that you want it in. Like I said before, don't tighten it down all the way until you actually get the, the upper strike latch uh, installed. Using the template for the top strike, you will align the top line to the mounting surface of the door or the header. Tend to fold these so I can get it up there. Make sure to stay on center line. Mark your holes with a center punch and Go ahead and install the top latch. Just a quick note. I've only temporarily installed this. I've only used one screw. And again, the strike isn't exactly where I want it to be but I'm just trying to make sure that the rod is in the right height. So when the rod is in its fully extended position, it should lock behind this component on the back side, trapping the latch against the strike. To adjust that, 
I would suggest putting the top strike next to the rod and just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that the, the rod is maybe about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more above the top line here so that it has plenty of room to catch behind the strike. Um, some adjustments will be needed. You can just back the, uh, the rod down or uh, raise it. But that is one of the most critical components because if the rod doesn't fully retract, the door won't open. If it doesn't fully extend and trap the or the latch here, the device won't operate and won't, the building won't be secure. One thing that you might end up dealing with is that the rod will actually bind, not because of, a, of an adjustment, um, and not necessarily because the the rod covers too long or cut in incorrectly, but the rod cover and the rod itself could actually bind. One thing that you could do is take a paper clip or another similar wire and place it underneath of the rod itself and the rod cover and reinstall the rod cover. What that will do is it will allow a little bit of space. You might not have to do this, but um, playing with these for a good long while, I found that that is um, one solution if the rod is binding and not releasing or uh, not allowing the door to secure when it's back in the latch position. One thing that you might run into as well, depending on the power supply that you use, the bars might not get enough voltage, um, or not voltage, but amperage. Using the average right PSSE power supply will give you enough amperage that the device will function properly. If an insufficient amount of amperage is actually applied, the bar potentially clap on and off like that, um, that would be a very clear indicator that you need um, more amperage to the device.